Welcome. My name is John Valenti, and I'm a principal in Deloitte's Financial Services Customer and Digital Strategy Practice. And today, I'm going to be joined by my client and friend, Chetan Kandari, the Chief Digital and Innovation Officer of Nationwide. Chetan, you've been at the role now for over a year, and I'd love to hear about the role itself and your journey uh, on what brought you here today. Hey, thanks, uh, Jonathan, and it's great to be here with you. Uh, like you said, I run Innovation Digital here at Nationwide. You know, a little bit about my background. I've been at Nationwide almost 16 years. Have the opportunity to actually be a part of several large-scale transformations at Nationwide. Um, had the opportunity to run our customer information management program, which was a several-year initiative to really look at consolidating our customer data. And then again at Nationwide, I was a member of the Personal Lines Transformation Program. I was able to actually be the sponsor of it from the technology side. And that really was a large effort to consolidate multiple, multiple legacy insurance applications to a single one. Here, now at Nationwide, I'm running Innovation Digital. My charter is pretty simple. Make a great digital experience when customers connect with us. That could mean anything from proactive, real-time, on-demand uh, experience. Meet customers where they are. And also to drive nationwide towards the future with new solutions, new products that customers want or actually may not even know that they want today. So, Chetan, as you stepped into this role, how did you want it to be different from uh, your predecessors? Yeah, I mean, you know what? Nationwide has been on a digital journey for a while and we've made a lot of progress over the years. Uh, the one thing I would probably say the biggest difference uh, that we are now headed down or the path that we're headed on now is one that we want to go all the way from the outside in to digitizing the journey, the sub-journey, all the way to the interactions and the processes with embedded artificial intelligence and analytics through those journeys. I would say the fundamental shift being expecting the customer to come to us, we will be there for the customer where they are. That's probably the biggest pivot. So one of the things coming into this role, Chetan, that I thought was distinctive was that you always wanted to plan big, but start small. Can you talk a little bit about your mindset there and, and how that's helped you uh, build momentum within the organization? Certainly. Uh, so yeah, we have a little bit of a mantra here at uh, our digital and innovation organization. And the mantra is, you think big, you start small, you learn quickly, and then if, if apt, you scale fast. So what does that mean for us? What that means for us is that we really have to come with a big picture and a big vision in mind, right? We want to play big. We want to take some big swings, but we also know one of the things that hampers execution is things like scope creep or things like 18 points of view or things that really then don't allow us to chunk things down and really understand if you're making meaningful improvements and really testing around our viability. I'm a big fan of kind of an MVP approach to things, right? To test the viability, what's the minimum to test viability, right? Once you get enough of the things that you can put in market to test viability, then you start marketing it, right? What's the minimum to market the product? Um, so to me, thinking big is super, super important because you have to have a vision. And that's how you have to get people to all row in the same direction. Starting small is because you need to build momentum. And you learn fast and you have to have really crisp success criteria right, suspect really crisp success criteria and leading indicators to tell you which way you want to pivot. That's great. And, and maybe talk a little bit too about how you've navigated what is a diverse organization, right? You're in the retirement space, there's the life and annuity side, there's property and casualty, as you mentioned. Maybe talk about how you're balancing some of those agendas um, and, and also how you do that in a role that uh, often shares responsibility of having a customer impact. So with the 
you know, chief customer officer and uh, chief marketing officer. And so we let me break that down into kind of three different things. The first is we had to be really, really clear. What is the purpose of the digital and innovation organizations? And, and you notice the word I used, purpose, because I fundamentally believe the purpose of our organization is to provide capabilities and expertise at scale to the core businesses. Number one, that is. Number two, we need to be really clear with our outcomes. And how do you define our outcomes? You have to define the outcomes from a perspective of leading indicators that tell you that you are on the path of the way the business wants to go. Those leading indicators have to connect with the lagging indicators. And then number three is, at the end of the day, it's all about experience. And the most important thing we can do is align our work with Amy Shore's organization, which is who is our chief customer officer. How do you do it? You really think and anchor with the customer in mind. Now, let's talk about the execution process with all of that. So those are kind of more the tenants, customer in mind. The execution process is you have to take a journey-centric mindset. One of the things that I'm a big fan of is when you start a transformation, even without calling a transformation, you really need to start with a new language. If you don't use a new language and you use a language that people have been using for a long time, it's really hard to change mental models. A new language allows us to have all of us on the new mental model. And the language of journeys, quite often people will say, is no different than what we've been doing in the past. We've been digitizing or been automating transactions for customers to come in and you know, do self-service. But quite honestly, that's exactly what the difference is. We've been automating our processes versus using intelligent automation and the customer-centric mindset towards what is important to get the right experience, which is a journey construct. And so we started with this concept of an inventory of journeys. And actually, John, you and your team and from Deloitte has been very helpful in getting us this inventory. And we needed to have this inventory across all of our businesses. And we did it for most of our businesses. And we built this inventory, uh, which then we can actually utilize based on the priorities of each of our businesses to help put together the priority. Each business is in a different place, like I said earlier. So you take what's important. Is the expense the important part of it? Is the customer experience? Is it both? Is there a strategic focus? And you use that to fix, to prioritize those journeys. So that's how I would describe the path that we are on. But at the end of the day, we are here to enable our core businesses, provide the right thought leadership, align ourselves with the priorities, put the customer-centric mindset, number, and how you do it is through this journey framework and really being really what I consider uh, to be maniacally focused on the priorities. Can we talk a little bit about the prioritization um, that you've used as, as part of uh, these efforts, right? There are a couple of different components. There's you know, the financial area, there's the customer impact, and even uh, an area around market enthusiasm. Can you talk a little bit about um, you know, how you're thinking about the measurement uh, of those outcomes and some of the challenges of that? Yeah, I mean, so, so let's, so let's um, you know, there's a lot in that question and you kind of framed it up pretty nicely, right? We do have multiple accesses like all of us do, right? You put two things on a, on a, on a kind of a framework and our framework has to combine in our world, customer impact, financial impact, and then what do we believe the market is going to want to do? And that's the market enthusiasm. But the, 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 the trick is, though that's not just science. It's an art. What do you believe? What do you believe in the assumptions? What assumptions do you believe? Where do you think the market is going to be in a little bit of time? What do you consider are your hallmark experiences? Right? That's where strategy starts to form. That's where we know what's unique to us and why we will win needs to form. Otherwise, all of this becomes a scientific process and everybody can do it. 
And, and we believe that we have some of the secret sauce on a few of these that makes us better than others out there. Uh, how do you start to um, make the organization believe that you're capable of delivering on some of this change, right? So one thing that we see a lot more of is more rapid prototyping um, in, in both for the purposes of testing with customers, but also to drive that alignment and belief within the organization. Can you talk a little bit about how you're doing that? Yeah, certainly. You know, let me first start with, um, um, you know, the construct that we have is this construct of journeys, but we also have this construct of sub journeys, which is important because, you know, at the core of this is, are you changing those indicators and what are your leading indicators? And one of the things that we are doing is looking at our outcomes at those sub journey and journey levels. And so, you know, what is making a difference? Where is a meaningful change? And so the outcomes that we look at from a digital perspective, at least leading indicators, are what level of adoption are you seeing? You know, are you seeing a growth in adoption for the claims transactions on, online or the claims journeys online? Are you starting to see um, people spending the amount of time it takes from start to finish? Where are you seeing the fall-off metrics? And so for us, it's really important to measure three or four of these things that ultimately tie to our retention goals, our growth goals, and and, so, and what have you. Uh, so that's really how we do it. Now, we know that there are certain ones that we need to do to build momentum. And so to your point, how do you start? You really look at three or four in each business area. So we actually prioritized about 20, 20 of them, these journeys across many of our businesses, and we started to plug away one at a time, creating journey-centric teams, product-centric teams that allowed us to move at speed and decision velocity that's needed to execute at the pace we wanted to execute to build um, that momentum. So I like where uh, what you mentioned there about the teams. Can you talk a little bit about how you're thinking about the roles and the skill needs within your own organization? I would consider our expertise really in probably three dimensions. The first is really all our experience, right? Whether it's the experience on the glass, whether it's actually design level thinking, empathy level thinking, um, applying insights that you've learned from talking to customers and being able to actually extract feedback from customers all in the domain of what I consider design-based and, and experience-based um, skills. The next is around digital product management. This is really understanding the quality and capability of your digital products. In this case, digital products being things like the mobile app, your website, chat bots, perhaps a visual IVR. You know, who somebody on your team has to know the best way to architect those products. And I don't mean the architecture just technologically, but the business architecture of it and understand the quality. Um, of those. And then the finally, from an innovation standpoint, you know, we have this concept of what I consider innovation team leads. Those who are really, really good in understanding domains, domains that are put into your business strategy and how you want to engage with the customer and in what domains you want to engage with the customer that help your core businesses and perhaps take bets for the long term. So how are you thinking then about the portfolio of work that you have between innovation and digital? We know we know that insurance and financial services is in a great place right now to be disrupted. And we're seeing a lot of entrance out there. And so what it that gives us, it gives us the opportunity to actually take what we believe we can do with the core businesses. And so we've organized ourselves, which is we're going to have a majority of our innovations connected with our core businesses in what I consider the horizon one, horizon two kind of duration and timeline and really, really get those nuggets where we can capitalize on the market uh, with those kind of uh, with innovation opportunities. And then we certainly will take a few, what I consider moonshots and take um, bets where we believe we can actually take what we believe the market is headed in the long term, but we also have expertise within our organization. But the biggest thing I believe that's going to differentiate winners from losers in this is the ability to execute. And the ability to execute is going to come down to talent, 
it's going to come down to decision velocity. It's going to come down to managing and taking risk. It's going to come down to the support and the leadership from your most senior level management in the company and the sponsorship from them. One technology that has been a part of that um, exploration has been conversational AI, right? One of the interesting aspects of that is the ability to intercept certain service interactions as opposed to needing to view digital as a separate channel. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you're working from a multi-channel perspective? Yeah, I mean, we, we certainly uh, are exploring right now as, you know, working with some of our partners in Deloitte, we're really trying to explore uh, multiple ways that our customers engage with us. Right? We've got actually a chat bot, it's called uh, Nora. That's our personality uh, that you can actually engage through our, through nationwide.com. But you can also engage with us through the phone channel that can then transition you through a digital channel. And you can also engage with us, connect in, like we always do through the, through the phone channel. But in the back end, we're trying to connect all of this through a set of artificial intelligence capabilities that knows about truly the way that you interact with us through the multi-channel experience and really be able to understand why the customer is calling ahead of them, ahead of them calling, to, uh, calling us and be ready and be proactive in a way for us to answer their questions or in the future actually reach out to them so they don't even have to come to us for the, with the question. So let's talk a bit about the, the human component that you mentioned before, um, or at least the, the emotional side uh, that you mentioned before. How are you thinking about elevating the human experience um, within the journeys that you're defining and some of the measurements uh, that you have and, and how you're also working with different parts of the organization um, beyond the digital? Yeah, I mean, you know, look, um, here nationwide, one of the things that we do really, really well and will continue to do well is know when, cu when customers have a need and we need to keep a promise when it comes to claims related things, we are there. So we are actually connected. We know how to connect with our customers emotionally and, and we're here for them. And so for us, we've actually, that's in our DNA. We are a company that cares. We are a company that cares about our people, about our associates, about our members, about our partners. And so that's in the DNA. So I actually think that's a super, super uh, big catalyst for us. You know, outside of that, as we, a little more tactically, we are taking these customer journeys that I talked about earlier, and we are building transformation maps. And these transformation maps are not just maps that show a process of how things work today, or the process of how it'll work in the future but they have to show the friction that's caused because the customer's thinking one thing. And that think, the way the customer is thinking is not how it's actually been implemented. You know, a great example for us in insurance is a lot of times customers call us to <coughs> pay a bill and we, yeah, we can pay the bill, but really what they're calling, their intent is different. Their actually intent is, when is the last time, when's the last day for me to actually pay the bill? And by the way, what if I paid this amount? You know, what happens to my coverage? When does it, there's so much behind it. And so really you have to get behind the question behind the question. And that's how we think about when we thinking about elaborating on these customer journeys. So the friction is not, you know, in the eighties and nineties business process re-engineering was big. Uh, you know, process redesign. And some of the people will say, well, this isn't, this is another way of process redesign. And I'd say no, because process redesign and business process re-engineering was more inside out. Was the journey is the men emotional state of people understanding where they are, their thinking processes that help you then define what consider what you consider to be a good customer experience. Chathan, thanks for uh, taking the time today. Yeah, thanks, uh, Jonathan, and it's great to be here with you.